Our city professionals can no longer afford to live inside the city. Firefighters, police, and teachers are just some of those that are priced out of the market. The only budget to spend what we need. That education, for me, was the answer to be able to support my family. Track record of giving back to this community, and I want you to take that away tonight. It has been involved in the community for some time. I actually served and represented you during the Citizens Oversight Panel on Sound Transit. This was in the early days. I understand the importance of making sure that um, neighborhood safety and transportation works. I'm an engineer. I also have a degree in public policy. Front of City Council, representing people in front of us. My background is I'm an engineer. I have a master's degree in engineering. Worked at Boeing for 11 years. Like Janice, I know data. I know data big time. Council member. As council member, I've directed funding to environmental stewardship, our pet bike program, and small businesses, and affordable housing. I Stuff we saw uh, in your campaign material. Without a referee, there is no competition. One council member doesn't get things done. It's the team. A place to live. It's a supply and demand problem. Some projects like the low barrier men's shelter that's being proposed for Eastgate as well, that um, was part of the reason why I jumped into this race because we are seeing a lack of transparency and a lack of um, neighborhood first perspective. I've done really hard to incorporate a lot of the new neighbors, new neighbors that have moved into the neighborhood that may not feel like they're a part of the community. He was very skeptical about whether this made sense. And so we worked with the DOT to actually do a presentation to the Transportation Commission to let them learn about it. And from an inclusion standpoint, we also invited other neighborhoods to come when we had the neighborhood. Um, I also represented our neighborhood on, on single family room rentals. I was invited with the city council to help draft their code. That so I feel like I've put a focus on our startups. I think that's what brought the GIX, the Global Innovation Exchange, to Bellevue because that energy, that innovation that we have, and that's a community. Some very valuable property, and what the city's going to have to do is make sure to resist the pressure to subdivide, to to uh, add a little development here and uh, and a super high-rise house there. A, an equestrian community here that I think we should preserve, and I'm happy to work hard for you on that. Ask what's involved in city council. City Council is making decisions that affect your livelihood, and you are not getting a say in it. What's your biggest opportunity? Your biggest opportunity is to push for transparency. Get somebody in the council that's going to listen to you. Take uh, when I looked at the comp plan in 1986, we had more than 40% tree canopy. Now we're down to 36. The problem is the fact that you're being notified of these developments far too late in the process. You need to be notified earlier so that you can have a voice and your community has an input as to what the impact might be. We'll figure out the power lines with PSC. I'm sure they can figure out a way. It's the 21st century. Staff should have known this was going to be a controversial topic. It, you, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this one out. They should have engaged the city council from day one, which would also... So that as they're developing the plan, they have those, those voices so that they understand what's going on. That absolutely matters. I also think that they need to be looking at technology and data and making sure that as they're working on stuff, what does a transparent pipeline look like? Well, Phil said you don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure this out. Well, if you do, I am a rocket scientist. I have a master's in my um, But anyway, what, what direct, to, direct instruction you need to city staff? You need data, and you need to be vetted. What happened in the Eastgate area is they bypassed the Planning Commission. By bypassing the Planning Commission, they did a disservice not only to the public, but to themselves. So we have not made a decision on where to put this homeless shelter. Staff has recommended Eastgate as a possibility, but until the council signs a conditional use permit and allows that to happen, there is no decision yet. We have a huge community process that needs to happen between now and if that time comes. And that community can ask, what does success look like to have a homeless shelter in Bellevue? I don't know what the answer to that is, but I am pretty convinced that working with you, we can come up with a good solution. Cognizant of the fact that you need to maintain your character first, which is being talked about, and then the growth itself uh, in the Bellevue, Bellevue Corridor in particular, it's going to have impact affect you. And when we talk about energized Eastside, that's one other thing. We're going to have additional 
need demand on a lot of things. These are all the things we need to manage right. And that requires talking to you, listening to you, working with you. Threat is losing your trees. And so having that in the comp plan now is going to preserve your tree canopy here. It's plan. How do they communicate out to the neighborhoods? What does it look like? And are they actually out in the communities and bringing people in to be inclusive? We need sustainable growth. Um, I don't want to take five minutes to pick up my daughter from daycare and all of a sudden it's 25 minutes. So we need to make sure, and, and Janice rightly pointed this out, that the growth areas need to happen where those areas where we have the right infrastructure. Lynn's right though. No decision has been made. Nothing's been finalized. Uh, and there's a couple of things. How many people here actually know what a low barrier shelter means? You do? You know then that it means that City Hall is a low barrier shelter? It's a frustrating, it is a failure on the city's part on the topic of Eastgate uh, homeless shelter siting. The city did not staff, you know, it's because we do not have accountability. We do not have accountability. We have a staff thinking that the councils made some decisions and then they went ahead because of the community uh, uh, urgency, urging, you know, that it becomes an issue when the homeless, uh, congregation of homeless wanted to site the uh, location. So it became a real big project. And so the question, the solution really is like we, we're talking about is to get some real accountability. But when you have a council of seven people, you know, the staffs are listening to us discussing, and the topic has not really been a clearly delineated issue. So as a result, it happened. So we need accountability. So I've been to many of those council meetings because I live in the Eastgate area. My house is less than one mile from the proposed site, and my office actually looks out over the site. So if there's anybody on this, panel that really wants to make sure that if the shelter is put in the Eastgate area, we want it to make it work. I want it to make it work because it's my neighborhood and it's my community. And I want us as Bellevue residents to show our compassion. If, if you can tell me a place in Bellevue that is not near residents, schools, daycares, or people, I'd love to find that area because there is no such thing. During this campaign, I've talked to a lot of city staff and one of the first questions that I asked them was, tell me what the process is when there's a major project on the horizon for outreach to the neighborhoods. You know I couldn't get an answer? There is no process, and that's the problem. Do you believe that bridal trails, equestrian nature, should be fully and consistently respected? Do you agree, with hands up if yes, that this city of Bellevue should avoid densifying a neighborhood like bridal trails until Bellevue's more urban areas like downtown, like Bell Red, like Wilburn have been fully densified. That's a unanimous. To have a process, I think you can safely argue, to achieve this, do you agree that this process, this plan, needs to be determined before the shelter location is chosen. The process is as stated there. It's the plan to make it rare for even one time. That's the stated goal. Should we have a plan for that in place before we choose our location or not? Many city residents are deeply concerned about other factors beyond power supply reliability. Would you steer the Bellevue City Council to prioritize decision factors such as safety, innovation, cost concerns, environmental concerns, etc., potentially above, at the level of or above, power supply reliability? That's a yes or no. Would you prioritize these other factors as well as reliability? Okay, well, I couldn't tell. Raise them high. You, okay, looks like everyone. Cool. So, would you make the creation of a tree master plan a high council priority? Yes. Everybody, now we're recording this. This isn't on video. <laughs> These are perfect. Okay, we have a 
unanimous uh, vote of support for a tech and innovation commission let's, are being redeveloped in ways that may change the character of the neighborhood. Are you willing to deny a developer's rezoning request in order to help neighborhoods maintain their character? Yes, with a hands up. has a long history with unreliable power. An electric reliability study recommended once that the city add a staff person or staff people with power system expertise. Will you and will you be a strong advocate for adding this staff position with power system expertise in the next city budget? Here's taking the energy question to a whole new level. Other cities in Washington no longer have a contract with Puget Sound Energy. Given how well Bellevue runs its water and sewer utilities, do you believe that Bellevue could and should operate its own gas and electric utilities? Wow. Um, so, so this is anyone with, who's ready to answer yes? Uh, okay, so we have one yes, and there's one, one, uh, I'll just say this. I hate the fact that monopolies like Comcast in our neighborhoods. With the power expertise. Well, basically, I, if I'm, I don't know if, if you meant I have to be limited to my eight things here, but I think the top ones are transparency and safety. Right now, you have electric infrastructure and homelessness. I would say that my top priority is transportation because it's awful here. Densification and development. Homelessness. Affordable housing. Densification. Well, I have to agree, densification, because I've heard too many people complain.